Hello students and welcome to my online biology classes that is biology with Sanjay sir. As you know that we have already entered a chapter called as PUC second year chapter number 14 the ecosystem. We have already finished the introductory part of ecosystem. We understood what is the structure and function of ecosystem. Today we will be studying one of the important property of our great nature that is productivity. Only from the definition itself that is the definition of productivity itself we can understand the value of plants on this planet earth. It may be a vegetarian organism or a non-vegetarian organism the entire biosphere is a dependent on these producers autotrophs or the plants. Now the first basic thing is the definition of productivity. What do you mean by productivity? It can be defined as it is the amount of biomass production per unit area per unit time during photosynthesis by the plants. Now in a simple terms I must have to say that the plants perform their photosynthesis action under the sunlight. They utilize the sunlight as the radiant source of energy and convert that thing into the production of food. Now when I say there is a creation of fruits then it is called as biomass produced. When I say that there is a creation of leaf, flower, stem, branches etc etc then I say that there is a production of biomass. Good amount of photosynthesis gives you good amount of biomass that is how much weight it can weigh. Some of the places where in which the photosynthesis process is slower or weaker or lesser then the biomass production of that plant will also be lesser only. In the areas where in which the sunlight, temperature, air, water, soil all those abiotic factors favoring the photosynthesis results in the formation of good amount of biomass production. Now once again I am telling you that what do you mean by bio mass production with respect to productivity it is nothing but the amount of mass which is produced inside the body of the plants in a specific area during the specific time by the plants during photosynthesis. It is very simple. It can be expressed with an equation called as g to the power of minus 2 and per year where in which I can say that G can also be written in the form of kilocalorie per square meter per year. Now from the equation itself we can understand that it is per area and per time. Why they have mentioned per area and per time? Because all the places does not have the equal amount of photosynthetic activity because all those places does not have the same quantity of air, temperature, soil, water etc different places have got different availability of these sources. So as the sources will be available the photosynthesis rate will increase. It is a common thing right. So that's why they said that during a specific place, during a specific area and during a specific time what is the production of biomass inside the body of plants during photosynthesis is called as the productivity. I hope you are understanding it ok. Now let us enter into the types of this productivity. The productivity has got two types, two divisions primary and secondary productivity. The definition of primary productivity concerns with the producers that is plants and the definition of secondary productivity concerns with the consumers or animals or other organisms. So once again for the primary productivity definition I can go with respect to productivity definition only that is the amount of biomass or the organic matter which is produced under a specific area and a specific time during photosynthesis by the plants is called as primary productivity. It is the same as that of the productivity definition only. Now it is also measured in terms of weight only that is per square of g and per year kilo calorie per square meter per year. Remember g is with respect to weight y r year is with respect to time kilo calorie is with respect to energy 
M is with respect to area and once again year YR is with respect to time. Please do not get it confused. Now the definition of secondary productivity. What do you mean by the secondary productivity? The amount of biomass produced when the consumers eat the primary producers or the plants. As far as the utilizing the sunlight and doing performing the photosynthesis and producing the biomass is concerned it is called as primary and when let us consider let us consider two things one as a plant and another as an organism such as a deer. Now this plant under the photosynthetic activity produces the food inside it. It grows in size that is called as biomass. Now this is called as primary productivity and this plant is being eaten by the deer. Now the energy is transferred from this plant to the deer. We can say that now after eating the leaves of this plant or eating the parts of this plant the energy or the mass is created in the body of a deer. Plant is an autotroph, plant is independent, animal is heterotroph and it is dependent. So the energy is transferred from here to here. So the energy produced inside the body of a consumer during a particular period of time, particular period of area is called as secondary productivity. I hope you are understanding it. In case of primary productivity, there are further divisions. Two types we see in primary productivity and what are those? Gross primary productivity GPP and net primary productivity NPP. I repeat, gross primary productivity GPP and net primary productivity NPP. Now let us understand what are the differences between these two. First one, what is gross? Gross, G -R -O -S -S, G-R-O-S-S, primary productivity. Once again, the definition of GPP or gross primary productivity is similar to primary productivity, which is similar to productivity. It is the amount of organic matter or the biomass which is produced during photosynthesis in the plants per area per time is called as the gross primary productivity, which means that it is the total energy. Try to understand this is the total amount of mass which is produced inside the body of the plants. Now what is the difference here with respect to NPP? What is net primary productivity? It is also one of the easiest to point only but a little confusing. Try to understand it. Consider that the plant has done the photosynthesis completely. The photosynthesis is over. It produced the food over. Now it does not mean that the entire plant is useful. All the 100% of a plant's biomass is useful because all that biomass will be allowed to enter into to go to some other biological processes of that plant also. There will be some amount of energy which will be entering into the production of fruits. There will be some amount of biomass which will be entering into the growth of the plants. There will be some amount of energy or the biomass which will be entering into the translocation of minerals from one place to another place. So growth, development, etc, etc. All these factors will be utilizing this particular energy produced by the photosynthetic activity. Now the entire thing is a GPP or the gross but entire variety is not at all usable for the consumers to eat. There will be lesser amount of biomass present in the body of plants that can be eaten. Not everything. Understand all the 100% content of the plant is not at all usable because it is already being taken up by its own biological activities there will be only less amount of biomass or the organic matter which is present in the body of producers and that is being transferred to the consumers and this process is called as net primary productivity don't forget it dear students once again i am repeating the same processes again and again gross primary productivity and net primary productivity during the photosynthesis per unit area, per unit time, what amount of biomass is produced in the body of plants is called as gross. Now, all this 100% of the biomass is not at all usable, only less amount is present in the body of produ producers which can be eatable and that content is called as net primary productivity and it can be given by an expression also. 
net primary productivity NPP is equal to gross primary productivity that is GPP minus R wherein which R is nothing but the residual amount which is present in the body of the plants which is being utilized for the metabolic activities done so gpp will be for the biological activities of the plants such as respiration and can be utilized by the plants only npp is not for the plants it is for for the other organisms and it is for in general it is for consumers remember now let us go to another point and that is what are the different factors affecting the productivity of the plants point number one is the area area is very very important because in this area itself we see variety of abiotic factors and their influences so area is important and second thing about the environmental factors which are present in this area now what are those environmental factors let us go one by one point number one is the sunlight the productivity of the plants will be higher if the sunlight concentration is more. The primary productivity, gross productivity or general productivity of the plants or the photosynthetic activity or the rate of productivity will be higher only in the higher concentration of sunlight. Do not worry about it. Do not forget about it. More amount of sunlight which means that more amount of photosynthesis which means that more amount of productivity that's why i have mentioned so many times that in case of the plants which are present in the tropical regions because tropical regions receive highest amount of sunlight and the amount of plants will also be higher in those places so the productivity in case of tropical regions will be higher because they absorb higher amount of sunlight let us go to point number two temperature as i mentioned about the temperature in my previous chapter also organisms and population temperature is important for the basic metabolic activity of the plants or any organisms now if you want to perform under the influence of temperature the range of temperatures are important because the temperature maintains the enzymatic activity enzymes are so sensible that if the temperature is low they will not perform very well and if the temperature is very high once again their activity decreases so the enzymes need a specific temperature at which the activity of these enzymes will be higher we call that one as optimum temperature i repeat the temperature at which the enzymatic activity will be higher is called as optimal temperature they do not like highest temperature they do not like lowest temperature they'll be needing in between temperature wherein which it feels that that yeah this is the time wherein which i have to show my maximum efficiency done sir so point number one sunlight point number two temperature let's go to point number three moisture moisture is nothing but content of water and it is present in rain or the atmospheric moisture itself humidity now in the atmosphere or in that particular area if the concentration of rain or the precipitation is higher which means that the photosynthetic activity along with the absorption of water the rate will be higher the productivity will be higher if i compare the tropical regions grassland regions and antarctic regions and the desert regions i say that in case of deserts the productivity will be less because it contains and it absorbs higher amount of sunlight higher amount of temperature and the humidity conditions or the moisture conditions or the precipitation or rain conditions will be less that's why in these places the productivity will be very less but if you compare them with respect to tropical regions the highest amount of productivity highest amount of precipitation highest amount of water conditions you can see now we'll go further about the soil conditions if that area's soil contains higher amount of minerals nutrients that also influences the easy uptake of these contents so that it will be helpful for that plant to grow effortlessly if the plant is enormous in structure and very healthy in nature it means that it has absorbed a very good content from the soil that is water minerals etc etc so about the soil and mineral conditions of the soil is also important as a productivity factor let's go to next point in some of the cases all these things 
are favorable to the plants but then also the productivity will be very less what does that mean not all the plants have got the efficiency to trap the sunlight and perform the photosynthesis for example sugarcane sugarcane has got higher amounts of photosynthetic efficiency that it absorbs good amounts of sunlight and performs the photosynthesis hence its productive biomass content will be higher dear students this is about the factors which influence the rate of productivity when you start studying in your ncert textbook whatever that i mentioned right now each and every line will be present in your books as i said in the beginning itself that i'll be concentrating on each and every line of ncert right so in the ncert when they talk about productivity they talk about two words one as the dry weight and another one as the biomass weight what do you mean by dry weight dry weight is that weight which is freed from the water or moisture which is present from the body try to understand if i am talking about a plant that in that plant if the content of water is there it is called as the total biomass what is a dry mass if you remove the water content from it then it is called as the dry weight now an interesting fact in the entire biosphere or in the world can you imagine how much amount of organic dry matter produced in this whole world it is approximately 170 per year it's very huge now one can say that our earth has got two divisions the 70% of water area and 30% of land area by the statement of 170 billion organic matter production one can easily think that the highest amount of organic production will be done by the 70% that is oceanic or the water levels or the organisms or the plants which are produced in the water no surprisingly no because majority of the production of the photosynthetic activity or the photosynthetic biomass will be dissolved in the water so majority of the content will not be done which is in the water though it has 70% of the earth's area it produces hardly 55 billion tons of the organic matter the rest will be produced by the 30% of the globe that is planet earth which means that the plants or the organisms which are present in the 30% of the area or the land area has got highest amounts of biomass production once again i repeat if i compare the life of water and the life of the land the highest production will be done by the land organisms not from the water organisms okay the productivity will be higher in case of land species or land organisms only don't forget it dear students until this time we discussed a fair amount of productivity topic i hope you understood this not all the biology topics will be done or will be studied in only one session it takes time with respect to other subjects also it takes time as like other subjects so what you have to think and what you have to believe is that repetition is the key to success the more amount of repetition helps you in understanding and grabbing the knowledge of this biology content from the videos otherwise it's just a movie watching so my personal sincere request is that you keep on reading keep on studying keep on watching my videos it will help you i'm not saying 100% i'm just saying that for a certain extent of your brain can receive my kind of biology i hope you understood this i'll bring another video for the next time that is a promise until that time please do like my videos subscribe to my channel that is important and share this video to other places also until that time god bless you all take care